Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another episode of Phrases and Sayings. Today I actually kind of want to discuss the saying that a lot of people have been bringing up recently. Why do bad things happen to good people? Or, more accurately, the worst things happen to the best people. Now, is this 100% true? Maybe. It really depends on the person. In reality, though, this, when that kind of thing happens, people have a tendency to focus only on like the bad stuff. But generally, when something like that happens, usually there's something equivalently as good going on in your life to count to like counterbalance it just the problem is there are a lot of people who seem to not notice it I'm going to use an example for this the job pink fox and i work at um so when pink fox first joined arby's i was already there one of her major reasons for joining was so she could work with me. Um, because she's not, She knows I'm an extremely optimi optimistic person to the point where it's actually scared some individuals into thinking I'm going to do something malicious or violent towards someone. Which I'm not. Um, anybody else who's out there who is this way knows exactly what I'm talking about. And she wanted to work around me. Which is all good. But whenever you join a job, there's always... If the job appears to be really good and really enjoyable, there's always this lingering really badness. A while ago, on the channel, I talked about something called the Golden Apple Manager. Well... The reverse of the golden apple manager is the rotten egg manager. Everyone knows when, what I'm talking about. Whenever you refer to a person to a rotten egg, yeah. For those who don't know what that is, it's just a really, really, really bad person. And now this all, it could either also be there's a rotten egg manager, there could be rotten egg customers. It really depends or consumers, it depends on the job and depends on who you receive as audience, I guess you could say. But whenever you get one side of the spectrum, you're going to get the other. But depending on who you are, you will either remind yourself of the good overpowering the bad, or you'll remind yourself of the bad overpowering the good. And some people are good at bouncing out and realizing, you know what, there's both, what am I supposed to do, and move on. That last one, unfortunately, is super rare. So, balance isn't always exactly easily noticed. That being said, um, how does this apply to the phrase and or saying that we brought up at the beginning. Why do good things happen, or why do bad things happen to good people? I almost said that in the reverse. Well, the fact of the matter is that when stuff, are, when everything is going extremely well in your life, something is bound, bound to screw it up to try to bring you down. In the case of the job example, it was a good job, good opportunity for the time being. It's what got Pink Fox and I this place. Um, however, in the long haul, the poorness of the quality of how lax a lot of the managers were started to seep through over time. And the amount of laziness from a lot of them made it way more difficult on our end than it really should have been. 
Like, there was one manager who would sit out in the lobby for the entirety of their shift. There was a manager who would, like, sit in the corner uh, complaining about circumstance while the rest of us are trying to take care of everything. Um, or there would be some managers who would, like, when labor hours are needed to be to be paying attention to and the the person who runs the store in general general manager um or area code it depends on where you're from or what company you're talking about but in this case general manager um when they ask the employees can you please make sure you leave within a within this point in time and the employees agree and then the shift manager outside of that knows about it and they still pretty much try to get you to stay as long as freaking possible it's just when you have circumstance like the ones i listed it can overweigh the alternative one good employee like for example if it was one manager and one good employee it wouldn't be as much of a problem um, it would still be a problem, though. In the case of this job, that's generally what it is. It's mostly one individual, but every now and then another one pops in, and it's kind of like a reminder. Which is kind of what makes it difficult, and what pri most of the time eggs on this phrase. But it's also what brings on venting. A little uh, scatterly throughout the channel, you would find me kind of venting about my own personal circumstance of things that have gone on in my life to see that it, it just felt like to me at those times that, that that exact phrase of why do bad things happen to good people? is because at those points in time, my brain, like any other individual, can't just process this good stuff has happened. Because at the time of those points, all you can think of is all the bad things that just happened. It's an overwhelming response. That's why the phrase exists in the first place, is because people get overwhelmed by these things and they respond in a manner that they can only think of at the time. And it's quite saddening, to be honest. So, to answer the question of the phrase, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, let's put it this way. One way or the other, you're going to get a bad thing, whether forced or not. Hypothetically speaking, say your life is going really well. Nothing bad happens because you, A, take care of your health, B, um, your job provides perfectly for what you need. C, you have a great family. Your kids are always obedient, or your siblings are always get along with you, depending on how old you are. Um, your wife and or husband, I guess, depending on where you are in life, and your parents or your wife and wife, wife or wife, husband or husband, husband and husband. You get the point. There, there are a lot of circumstances. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Parents, the individuals like that, if everyone in your life is just like going, like you're getting along with everyone just fine with, you know, every now and then there'll be a hiccup, but that doesn't really do anything. And then suddenly, out of the blue, something happens where someone brings you down because it damages you in a way that was forced. Like, say someone out there gets super jealous and tries to invade. Like, kidnaps someone. Let's put it that way. What will you do? You go to a police uh, department and try to report a missing person's report. It does have to take a while, unfortunately, but you put it out there. Say this person was well-known, though, for being 
Once they kidnap them, they do some pretty, pretty, pretty crappy things. Well? Are you really going to think the logical go to the police department off the bat? Or are you going to start freaking out? Saying, why me? Most people will immediately answer, go to the police police department, but, you know, once it actually happens, that's not what they do. Psychologically speaking, this has just been proven time and time again. This example gives an idea. It's, it's a drastic example, and it's a very heavy, but it gives off an idea of what I'm referring to. If no bad things ever happened in your life, you would basically be the bad thing. Or you'd be emphasized asking for the bad thing just based off response you would give. And most of the time, these responses, if not all the time, are very subconscious. They're not really recognized by your own individual self. But unfortunately, it doesn't avoid the fact that one way or the other, something bad is bound to happen to balance it out. Whether you're the cause of it or someone else is the cause of it towards you, it doesn't matter. Um, regardless, one way or the other, something bad will balance out. All the good has happened. That's why bad things always happen to good people. And the better the person, the worse the item is. Good Samaritans out there, for example. I guarantee every single extremely good Samaritan who has done every little thing they possibly can has probably lost someone extremely close to them. Realistically, from experience, I can say this. If they haven't lost someone, literally, like through death or anything, they definitely would have at least metaphorically or mentally lost someone. For example, say hypothetically... And this probably has happened to a lot of people. Say you're a really good person. You do whatever you can to help society. Whatever you can to help those around you. And suddenly, someone who is close to you stabs you in the back. Out of the blue for no reason. At least no reason you can think of. Maybe they have a reason, maybe they don't. Maybe it's natural instinct, maybe it's not. Honestly, I couldn't say. When that happens, maybe there's like a small pinch of individuals of the 7.1 billion people on the planet at the current moment who would go, this is life, and move on. The much, much, much larger amount of individuals will see that scenario and go, well, they'll just break. I was going to give a verbal response of what they could do, but that's the best way to describe it. They would mentally break. Everyone, medically, medically speaking, everyone who has gone through stuff that causes PTSD, they're the perfect example of these individuals that I'm thinking of. All of them just so happen to be good Samaritans to a large degree. And I'm not going to list any examples because quite frankly, that would cross the line of confidentiality. I do know many, many, many people who have gone through this kind of trauma before, and yet they seem to be the best people I've ever met. The kindest, most willing individuals I have ever met on this planet. It's unfortunate because... These are the people, it is true, these are the people where the worst things have a tendency to happen. And it's sad. But it is the case. So why is it? Why does it happen? To finalize the answer, it happens to balance out all the... If it happens early on, it's going to balance out all the good that comes later. You'll get all the extreme bad first, and then in the aftermath, all this extreme good will come. If your life starts perfectly and you're extremely good, you're bound to get something extremely bad. But generally, the reverse has a tendency to happen. 
where the bad comes first for extremely good people. And the longer those bad things last, the better a person you're going to turn out to be. So that was the physical answer leading to the psychological answer. The psychological answer to why do bad things happen to good people is experience. Are you a parent? If so, when a kid, when your child goes through certain struggles, how many times have you used your own personal experiences to help them progress with the problems they've had? This is a rhetorical question, but think about that. My parents are a good example of this, actually. I've had a lot of struggles in my life. And before meeting Amber, it felt like they were excessive. My dad being an accountant was a big help to this because one of those problems was always the finances. It's not even remotely as bad as it used to be now, given whatever's going on in my life, whatever circumstance it might be. I know for a fact that one way or the other, I've definitely gotten better at it. Way better than I used to be. And that's just thanks to that exact aspect. If it wasn't for the factor, the psychological factor I'm talking about, I would have an even worse scenario. I'd be homeless. Or at least it's a high it's a high chance. But as you guys can see, it's not the case. This is a good kind of lighter end example of what I'm talking about. Why do bad things happen to good people? On a psychological front, it's so they can give off experience and help those later on down the line. Say you end up meeting someone like a pupil or you end up having a child who ends up in a breakup because of cheating. They find out their significant other cheated on them and they were very, very, very hurt by it. And you just so happen to go through that several times in your past, which in today's society is not uncommon at all. So I feel like this is a good example. If this example qualifies for you, you have the perfect experience to help your child out or your peer, pupil, whatever it may be. If they're going through issues and they just got, went through a breakup because they found out they're significant other cheating, you've experienced that, you can use your own experiences to A, relate, making already those bad things you've gone through turn good on a psychological front, but B, not, not only one does it make it easier for you to relate, but B, it makes it easier for you to give advice to the person on how to cope with it. And this will be even more convenient if you actually know the individual, like a child. If it's your child, you know everything about them. Almost as much as they know about themselves. The only reason a person has a tendency to know more about themselves, as a side note, is just due to the fact that they are themselves. They know every nook and cranny about their individuality. Sometimes it, when it comes to the childhood part, it's different because, you know, you have a certain limitation to what your brain can remember. remember. But I digress. I guess the point in this is just that the psychological, simple psychological to answer to that is, as I said at the beginning, experience. Simple experience that could help benefit people in the future is the main psychological reason to the question of why do bad things happen to good people? Why do the worst things happen to the best people? Because when the worst thing happens to you, you can give the best advice. But these are my thoughts on the matter. Maybe I'm not 100% correct, or maybe you've had different experiences. Everyone's different. 
but generally this is just how I've seen it and how I've seen other people approach it and my thoughts because of these. But like I said, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Um, if there are any examples you guys would like um, to share, we'd love to hear them. We'd love to read them. We look through comments all the time. That's actually why there's not a reading your comments video on here. Especially since there's not like hundreds of comments down there. If it gets to that point, I actually might do those that series. At a, I might start up that series at some point. But for right now, yeah, we're just going to leave it at this. Uh, but if you like this video, make sure to push that like button. And so far, you can't see it anymore. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Want to check out any other videos on different phrases and sayings that this channel has talked about? Click the link on this side of my head, and you'll find a fair few for the time being, unless you're watching this in the distant future, then maybe there's a lot of them. Or if you don't find this 100% appealing, but you sat through the end, first of all, thank you. And thank you to those who still sat through regardless. Um, but if you want to check out something that may match your liking a bit more that's on this channel, click link on the other side. You two will probably find something more to your liking. Anyway, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning in this video, guys, and we hope to see all of you in another one. Catch you guys later.